Betty, did you get the reward of constancy? Oh, no, ma'am. Oh. I traversed half the town in search of it. I don't believe there's a circulating library in Bath I haven't been at. Oh. And the mistakes of the heart? No, indeed, ma'am. As ill luck would have it, Mr. Ball said Miss Suki Santa had just borrowed it. <sighs> Hey-ho. Did you inquire for the delicate distress? Yes, ma'am. But Lady Slattern Lounger, who had just sent it back, had so soiled and dog's-eared it, it wasn't fit for a Christian to oh. read. Hey-ho again. <sighs> well, Lucy Child, what have you brought me? Oh, here, ma'am. This is the Gordian knot, and this peregrine pickle. Here are the tears of sensibility and Humphrey Clinker. Mm-hmm. This is the memoirs of a lady of quality, written by herself. <laughs> and here the second volume of the sentimental journey. Oh, oh, very well. Give me my soul volatile. Is it in a blue cover, ma'am? <laughs> it's my smelling bottle, you perfect simpleton. <laughs> oh, the drops. <laughs> Here, ma'am. <laughs> Hold. Here's someone coming. Quick, see who it is. Yes, ma'am. Cousin? Surely I heard my cousin Julia's voice. Look, (gasps) ma'am, here is Miss Melville. Is it possible? Lydia! (laughs) My dearest Julia, how delighted I am. How unexpected was this happiness. True, Lydia, and our pleasure is the greater. (laughs) But what has been the matter? You were denied to me at first. Ah, Julia, I have a thousand things to tell you. But first inform me what has conjured you to Bath. Is Sir Anthony here? He is. We are arrived within this hour, and I suppose he will be coming here shortly to pay his respects to Mrs. Malaprop. Well, then, before we are interrupted, let me impart to you some of my distress. My letters have informed you of my whole connection with Beverly, but, Julia, I have lost him. My aunt has discovered our intercourse by a note she intercepted and has confined me ever since. No. Yet, would you believe it, she has absolutely fallen in love with a tall Irish baronet she met one night since we have been here at Lady McShuffle's reception. You jest, Lydia. No, upon my word. She really carries on in a kind of correspondence with him, under a feigned name, though, until she chooses to be known to him. But it is a Celia or a Delia, I assure you. Uh, then surely she is now more indulgent to you, her niece. Uh, quite the contrary. Since she has discovered her own frailty, she has become more suspicious of mine. Oh, then I must inform you of another plague. That odious Acres is to be in Bath today. So that I protest I shall be teased out of all spirits. Come, come, Lydia. Hope for the best. Sir Anthony shall use his influence with Mrs. Malaprop. But you have not heard the worst, Julia. Unfortunately... I had quarrelled with my poor Beverly just before my aunt made the discovery and I have not seen him since to make it up. What was his offence? Nothing at all. But I don't know how it was. As often as we had been together, we had never had a quarrel and somehow I was afraid he would never give me an opportunity. So, last Thursday, I wrote a letter to myself to inform myself that Beverly was at that time courting another woman. I signed it, your friend unknown, showed it to Beverly, charged him with his falsehood, put myself in a violent passion, and I vowed I would never see him again. And you let him depart mm. so, and have not seen him since? Aye. Well, it was the next day my aunt found the matter out. I intended only to have teased him three days and a half, and now I have lost him forever. If he is as deserving and sincere as you have represented him to me, he will never give you up so. 